February 10th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Exodus chapters 23 and 24 from the Old Testament. You must not give a false report. Do not make common cause with the wicked to be a malicious witness. You must not follow a crowd in doing evil things. In a lawsuit, you must not offer testimony that agrees with a crowd so as to pervert justice. And you must not show partiality to a poor man in his lawsuit. If you encounter your enemy's ox or donkey wandering off, you must by all means return it to him. If you see the donkey of someone who hates you fallen under its load, you must not ignore him, but be sure to help him with it. You must not turn away justice for your poor people in their lawsuits. Keep your distance from a false charge. Do not kill the innocent and the righteous, for I will not justify the wicked. You must not accept a bribe, for a bribe blinds those who see and subverts the word of the righteous. You must not oppress a foreigner, since you know the life of a foreigner, for you were foreigners in the land of Egypt. For six years you are to sow your land and gather in its produce. But in the seventh year you must let it lie fallow and leave it alone, so that the poor of your people may eat, and what they leave any animal in the field may eat. You must do likewise with your vineyard and your olive grove. For six days you are to do your work, but on the seventh day you must cease, in order that your ox and your donkey may rest, and that your female servant's son and any hired help may refresh themselves. Pay attention to do everything I have told you, and do not even mention the names of other gods. Do not let them be heard on your lips. Three times in the year you must make a pilgrim feast to me. You are to observe the feast of unleavened bread. Seven days you must eat bread made without yeast, as I commanded you at the appointed time of the month of Abib. For at that time you came out of Egypt. No one may appear before me empty-handed. You are also to observe the Feast of Harvest, the first fruits of your labors that you have sown in the field, and the Feast of Ingathering at the end of the year, when you have gathered in your harvest out of the field. At three times in the year all your males will appear before the Lord God. You must not offer the blood of my sacrifice with bread containing yeast. The fat of my festal sacrifices must not remain until morning. The first of the first fruits of your soil you must bring to the house of the Lord your God. You must not cook a young goat in its mother's milk. I am going to send an angel before you to protect you as you journey and to bring you into the place that I have prepared. Take heed because of him and obey his voice. Do not rebel against him, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. But if you diligently obey him and do all that I command, then I will be an enemy to your enemies, and I will be an adversary to your adversaries. For my angel will go before you and bring you to the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I will destroy them completely. You must not bow down to their gods. You must not serve them or do according to their practices. Instead, you must completely overthrow them and smash their standing stones to pieces. You must serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water, and I will remove sickness from your midst. No woman will miscarry her young or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. I will send my terror before you, and I will destroy all the people whom you encounter. I will make all your enemies turn their backs to you. I will send hornets before you that will drive out the Hivite, the Canaanite, and the Hittite before you. I will not drive them out before you in one year, lest the land become desolate and the wild animals multiply against you. Little by little I will drive them out before you, until you become fruitful and inherit the land. I will set your boundaries from the Red Sea to the Sea of the Philistines, and from the desert to the river for I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand, and you will drive them out before you. You must make no covenant with them or with their gods. They must not live in your land, lest they make you sin against me, for if you serve their gods, it will surely be a snare to you. But to Moses the Lord said, 
Come up to the Lord, you and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship from a distance. Moses alone may come near the Lord, but the others must not come near, nor may the people go up with him. Moses came and told the people all the Lord's words and all the decisions. All the people answered together, We are willing to do all the words that the Lord has said. And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. Early in the morning he built an altar at the foot of the mountain and arranged twelve standing stones according to the twelve tribes of Israel. He sent young Israelite men, and they offered burnt offerings and sacrificed young bulls for peace offerings to the Lord. Moses took half of the blood and put it in bowls, and half of the blood he splashed on the altar. He took the book of the covenant and read it aloud to the people, and they said, We are willing to do and obey all that the Lord has spoken. So Moses took the blood and splashed it on the people and said, This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and the seventy elders of Israel went up. And they saw the God of Israel. Under his feet there was something like a pavement made of sapphire, clear like the sky itself. But he did not lay a hand on the leaders of the Israelites, so they saw God, and they ate, and they drank. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me to the mountain and remain there, and I will give you the stone tablets with the law and the commandments that I have written, so that you may teach them. So Moses set out with Joshua, his attendant, and Moses went up the mountain of God. He told the elders, Wait for us in this place until we return to you. Here are Aaron and Hur with you. Whoever has any matters of dispute can approach them. Moses went up the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord resided on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day he called to Moses from within the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on top of the mountain in plain view of the people. Moses went into the cloud when he went up the mountain, and Moses was on the mountain forty days and forty nights. God, I keep thinking about the people of Israel who keep saying, we are willing to do all the words that the Lord has said. And yet, we know that they haven't done those things and we know that they're not going to do those things. And I know today I wake up in the morning and say I am willing to do all the words that the Lord has said. And sometime today I will fail that. I will fail you. So I come before you today with thankfulness in my heart for not only your grace and your mercy that I stumble every single day and I veer away from what I say I'm going to do in the morning. And somewhere along that process, I and what I want become more important than what you want and what you expect of me. But I come to you with thankfulness for the forgiveness of those sins that as we're reading about in the New Testament, of sending your only son down here to die a horrid death for the sins of everyone. All the sins that have happened in the past, all the sins that are currently happening right the second, all the sins of the future. He died for everyone's sins to take them all away so that we can each morning start fresh, start brand new, start clean and say those words to you again that I have every intention today of living up to everything that I should be in your sight, God. Thank you for that forgiveness because I know without a doubt that I wouldn't be able to get up that next morning. The weight of the previous sins just pressing in on me tighter and tighter and heavier and heavier until I can't even breathe or move or even think about what anything else looks like. That by your grace and your forgiveness, you have given us freedom. Unfortunately, many times we take that freedom and continue to do what we want to do instead of changing our ways. I pray, God, today that the changes will stick. That this time I will learn what I'm supposed to do and what I'm not supposed to do. 
What I'm supposed to say and not supposed to say. What I'm supposed to think and not supposed to think. It's not that we need to, need to be reminded of what your laws are, God. Or what you expect of us. Christian and non-Christian, we pretty much know that. It's just that intentional fact that you must become greater and we must become less. Please help me be very intentional about that today, God. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Thank you.